be showing you how to make s'mores. So your materials you need is a butter, marshmallows, or a Hershey chocolate, Marshmallows. Is there a certain kind of chocolate you prefer? How do you know when it's done? What do you do if it catches on fire? How do you like your marshmallow? Like how, what, how, what does your marshmallow look like when it's done? Golden brown. Golden brown. Hidden behind your fire. that when you do these folds you're doing them extremely slow and make sure that we are all seeing exactly the exact folds that you're making can I do you have any more of that paper by the way yeah I'm wondering if we could for the purpose of this demonstration I think it'll be cool if you have a volunteer someone who's standing right next to you that's not done this before who you're gonna show us and they're gonna be able to do it so when we're done we'll see two um, origami puppets mm -hmm. what do you think I think that would be kind of cool. So we can actually see, like, this is one where, who's gonna be your volunteer? Who's gonna be your stage Natalie. volunteer? Natalie. All right, Natalie, come on up. Be a stage volunteer today. She Welcome, her. Natalie, to the stage. Okay. So you still, you're doing everything the same, but the idea is that if you, we should be able to be pulled this origami poppet by based off of your instructions. So Natalie, you gotta wait. You gotta just do what she tells you to do. All right, so gentlemen, okay. Restart. You don't have to restart. You can pick up right where from where you left off. Okay, so start with the first fold. You're gonna fold it in half diagonally. Okay. You're gonna flip it over, fold it diagonally again, except the other way. So when you unfold it, you should have an X. Did these start out as, as square pieces of paper? No, I had to cut them. Oh, but my point is, before you started folding them, these were squares, correct? Yeah. Thank you. So you're gonna fold it half the other way, again. So you should have another fold, sort of like a star shape. You might wanna lean forward to and really show the camera, so. 
This part is a little tricky for some people, but you're just going to take the sides, bring them together, and push this down so it's behind it, like this. Mm -hmm. So you Remember, she so give it back to her. So, no, unfold it. Okay. So there's gonna be two flaps, sort of. You're gonna fold it to the center. There should be a crease there. You're gonna do that again. You're gonna flip it over and do the same thing. Show Natalie too, so she can do it with you. She's not getting anything. Repeat the direction. Repeat the direction. Let's just take it. Repeat so, the direction for her. Do you have a question? I do. Who, who taught you how to do origami, or is it something that you learned from a book? How did you learn this? So you have seven pre-made already? cheese do you recommend? Um, I recommend Italian and sharp cheddar, that's what I use. And then I got the two flour tortillas. Uh, two. Okay, is there a specific kind that you like or size? Nope. Or, oh yeah, eight inch. Eight inch. And then I got a plate. I got a mic, I'm not gonna hold that up. <laughs> I got a knife, but I gotta be butter because I'm in school. I got a paper towel just in case it gets messy. And I got a measure. What so, size? And a half a cup. Um, so the first thing you gotta do is you gotta lay out one tortilla on your plate. So you gotta get this laid out. The 
the second step is you gotta sprinkle two ounces of Italian and two ounces of sharp cheddar cheese on the tortilla. So it's kind of melting, but it'll still work. And what my mommy's friend told me is that uh, half a cup is um, two ounces. So I got measured. I already measured, but it's kind of melting, so I don't know if it'll be the same. It will be the same. So you've already pre-measured it? Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, so technically you can take it right from the bag onto the quesadilla. And then spread it out. By the way, make sure you wash your hand before. I already did. Yeah. I mean, this ain't working. Beautiful. So now you gotta take your side cutter and you gotta put it on the top. <laughs> so do you, you do two ounces of each? Uh-huh. So for a total of? Uh, four ounces. Yes? Now, is there like a specific way you do it with the Italian person on the cheddar second, or can it be either way? It can be either way, but I like to put the Italian first myself. And then um, you got... Um, uh, uh, lay the other tortilla on top of it, mm -hmm. and then you have to uh, put or set it in the microwave for 60 seconds and cook it on high. Mm -hmm. Hope this works. Do you ever use a quesadilla maker or do you always use the microwave? The microwave. Have you ever used a quesadilla maker? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Special machine that actually makes quesadillas. Okay. Cheese quesadillas. Yes? Do you prefer chicken quesadillas or cheese quesadillas? Both. I don't really. Normally I don't make cheese though. Uh, what do you eat with your quesadillas? Do you take salsa, sour cream, I normally queso? Take, me and myself, I normally take some hot sauce with it. I feel like that's it too, but I didn't really bring any in. Mm -hmm. okay. So perhaps uh, yeah, so oven mitt? Uh, sometimes. You have to let it cool for like a minute or so, or like 30 seconds, I'll say. Just so let it cool. So if anybody has any other questions, let me know. I, I assume you cut it. You cut it just in half, quarters, uh, in I, six. I'll get onto that stuff. I just need to let it cool first a little bit. Rowan? I don't know. <laughs> Microwave. Oh! <laughs> okay. So now she's good enough. I've never done it with a butter knife, but now you have to pull it out and cut it into eights. So, let's see if I can. My oh, butter knife's don't work that good. Cut through your plate. Good, you can cut it however you want, and then uh, enjoy. Oh. <laughs> give, him, give him a round of applause. You have to see our reaction.
just to split your hair into three pieces. Can you spin around so we can see the back of her hair and see how you're, um, you're splitting her? Keep coming all the way around. That's much better, now we can see. Yeah, keep, keep her back to us so we can actually see her. Can you describe the process you're using, doing using words like over and under? Um, well, so this is going to go over this one. Over the middle. Over and under the right. And then you're switching sides, right? Yeah. Now you're going to start from the right. Go over the, left. over the middle and under the left. Give her a round of applause. So, I'm going to be teaching most of the people here how to play Pokemon because a lot of people only trade cards and they don't actually play the game. So, you're going to only really need two things. You're going to need a deck of cards, which is 60 cards. Or you can, go, you can go to a store and get a battle deck, which has exactly 60 cards, a bunch of energy, all the stuff that you need to actually play a game of Pokemon. So, first things first, oh, and also you're going to need another person to play with, I have Shane here. Mm -hmm. First thing that you're going to do is you're going to take five cards from your, seven cards from your deck, and you're going to add them into your hand. Was the deck all pre-shuffled? For, yes. Do for you Shane. build the deck, or is it a random deck? Is it, it is a random deck. This is my deck that I've built, but that one is completely random. Okay. So, the second thing that you're going to do is that you're going to take six cards from your deck and put them into what is known as a prize card selection. These are cards that you get when you um, paralyze other Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah. Paralyze is a sad spec, which can 50-50% chance <laughs> prevent your Pokemon from attacking. Yeah. So, the first thing that you do to start the game is you flip a coin, and whoever wins the coin flip needs to go first. So, I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to say that I go first. So, before I start my turn, we're both going to pick a Pokemon that we want and put it into our active spot, which is where we battle. That's the Pokemon that we used to battle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can flip it. Okay, and then we start, and first thing that I would do is I pick a card from my deck, because that is the very first thing that you do when you start your turn, and then Shane can actually read off of that, which, if you would, is the order of what you start. Okay. So first thing you want to do is draw a card, which you must do at the beginning of every single turn. Like I said. And then put as many basic Pokemon, you'll know if it's basic by the top right corner. And I just did that with my card solid right here, I put that in my bench. So you can put as many basic Pokemon you want in your bench. Actually, it's up to five. Five cards in Yeah, five. Yes. <laughs> but... Um, and then you're allowed to attach one energy card to any one of your Pokemon as long as it's in the bench or active. I have a water energy, this is a water type. There are multiple types of Pokemon. So if you look at its health, you look to the very right of its HP. Yeah, right here. Right. No, ah, right there it has HP. This is a 210 HP card. If you look right there next to it, you can see a water effect, a water energy, meaning that this is a water card. It can only use water energy unless it has this white star, meaning it can use any energy from there. So I'm gonna place it back down and I'm going to attach one water energy. You can only attach one energy per, your per turn. Now, 
question. Do you have to have the energy attached to it in order to use it in this building? Yes. Okay. Um, next thing you're allowed to do is you're allowed to retreat and only your active Pokemon, and that's only once per turn. Um, and you can evolve as many Pokemon as you want. And how this works is if you have, so let's say you had Jiggle. Uh, I actually do. If it uh, Then he can place it on his Pokemon to evolve it. Yep. That's what I'm going to do, actually. <laughs> um, and you can do that as for as many Pokemon that you have on your bench mm -hmm. or at your spot. Um, and then you can play as many trainer cards as you want, which I have one of them. I don't have any right now, so I can't show you. So you'll know it's a trainer, judging by its saying trainer on the top, but you can only use one supporter, which is shown on the top left. Mm -hmm. So and then you can use as many abilities, which is free. It's, let's see, do I? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I have a drizzle with the ability Shady Dealings. Um, and basically you wanna read that and do whatever it says if you wanna use it. And this does not have any cooldown. You can only use it once every every, every, turn. every turn. Yeah, yeah. every turn. Yeah. Um, and it is free as well, so you do not need any energies attached to it. And then at the end, you can attack with your active Pokemon if you have the energies attached. And the seventh thing is attack, obviously. So I'm gonna do. Yes. Oh, there's a seven. Let me see. Seven of these. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, eight is ah, attack. So, I actually do have attack on this card with one energy. It's called Pierce, if you can see it. It does 40 damage. So, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, in order to use attack, I'd say I'm going to use Pierce using one energy. And I have dice, dice here which are my damage counters. So I find the right die that has 40 damage right here. You can see it says 40 on it. It says 40. And then I take it and I put it right next to um, Shane's Pokemon. There it is. So that indicates that Shane has taken 40 damage and we now repeat until it's Shane's turn. And turn up on time. We repeat this process until either of us get all of our own cards. So let's say it was my turn three times. So every time you knock out a Pokemon, you pick up one of these and you mm -hmm. add it to your my deck hand. Once you use up all of your prize deck. cards, yes. yeah, yeah, it's your hand. Yes, yeah, right. Once you use up all your prize cards and put them in your hand, you win. Or there's another option if your um if opponent the opponent runs out of all of their yes. Uh, cards in their deck and they So when you're attacking and you're doing hit points, who are you doing the damage to? I'm doing it to the um, Pokemon the active Pokemon. Pokemon. Yes. Unless there's okay. a specified... So there's not like you've got a certain amount of life and you've got a certain amount of life. Yes. No, there is a certain amount of life. I understand that on the card, but you yourself. As opposed to like Magic the Gathering, where the player has 20 hit points. Yeah. Then you also have additional characters that have hit points. Yeah, no, we do not have things. Okay, so, so when you're attacking, you're not trying to do damage to Shane. No. You're only trying to damage his creatures and his Pokemon. Yeah, and get pressed. And unless it's specified okay. on the... Unless it's specified on the card yes, saying that it attacks the bench... Uh, I don't have any cards saying that, okay. but then it does all that damage. We're gonna we're gonna pause right there. We're gonna give you a big round of applause. Yep. Guys. Uh, my name is Logan, and I'm gonna teach you how to make brownies. So the stuff you're gonna need, you're gonna need brownies. Um, you're gonna need brownies. 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 You you're gonna need a uh, half a cup for your olive oil or vegetable oil. You're gonna need um, three teaspoons of water. You're gonna need two eggs. Okay, I see you already brought some in cracked. Yep. Smart man. And then, of course, you're gonna need your brownie mix. 
Is, is there a particular kind of brownie mix that you like better than others, or are they all just good? Amazing. Okay, so you don't have a specific kind that you buy, or, or brand, or flavor? I like the these ones because I love milk chocolate. Okay. Betty Crocker, mm -hmm. milk chocolate. You're gonna need spray, so your brownies don't stick. Vegetable oil or olive oil, and then water. And then you're going to need a mixing bowl. So, if you had an oven, I don't have one. You're going to need to preheat it to 350 degrees. And then you should start putting. Who do you make brownies with at home? You break them with your mom, your dad, mm -hmm. brothers or sisters? My, my mother. So you're basically just gonna pull brownies. Trash cans are behind you. You want to know a neat baker's trick? Pour the water into the spoon right over the bowl. Do the same thing with the olive oil, right over the bowl. That way, if you spill it, it ends up in the bowl. Don't forget to share. What are you doing? So we're gonna mix all of these together. Well, how many eggs did you pour in? Two. So we're just gonna mix all that together. Like basically going to Now you don't want any lumps or anything sort of that. You want it nice and Because if you have lumps, if those break, you're going to have a bunch of brown in it, and that's just not going to be good. Can you use an electric mixer? Yeah, you can use whisk. Anything that can mix, you can use. Do you have one that's a preference? Um, I would use electric or just a normal whisk. I'm using a spoon because I didn't want to bring electric or a normal whisk because it did broke. If there is no wet brownie mix, it's done. And then 
Once you are done. What do you use the clipboard for? Can you do it with more, like four, five, six? Does it just get more complex? Why are you teaching us um, how to do a friendship bracelet? Because Why'd you pick this? I like making bracelets. Do you wear them? Are they still cool to wear? I, I don't wear them because they just fall off and they get ruined. But I like, like this paper. And once you Would it help if somebody held your clipboard? Uh, probably, but... If you want to volunteer to help hold that clipboard. Will you do a couple of them though? Yeah. Well, they stay up there. Will you do a couple? Yeah. So now the camera can really see what you're doing? So, Can you bring it closer? Come right around the front of the... Give her a round of applause. Okay, I'm gonna teach you guys how to braid. So the ingredients you need is a person. I took Maria. You need hair, hands, and a hair tie. Okay. Mr. Trumbull? Um, do you ever use a brush? If their hair is not. Okay, so you're gonna gather all of her hair and then you're going to split it into three ways. 
take the middle piece. What about that hair on her left side? Yeah. Oh, oops, I forgot. Okay, you're gonna take the middle piece and bring it under the left and bring the middle piece into the middle. And then you're gonna take the middle piece and do the same thing but under the right. And you're gonna keep doing that and you're gonna take the middle piece and bring it under the left. Yeah, don't say keep doing it, keep doing it and tell us left over right, right over left. And then you're gonna bring it under the right piece. And every time it like switches back into the middle and it becomes easier the more you do it. And so as I, as I understand it, you're basically going over the middle and under the opposite side. Yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. And you keep doing it until you get to the end of her hair. Do you have a favorite kind of braiding? Like, do you like um, French braid, regular braid, fishtail braid? Um, what other um, kinds of braids are there? I can sometimes, like... Do you have a favorite? Um, Dutch braid on me, but I don't... It's fun to do, but it doesn't turn out very well when I do it. What is a Dutch braid? Just explain a little bit. It's when you start from the top of your head, it's like a French braid, but you go under instead of over the head. Okay. So then it like pops out. Okay. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. All right, give her a round of applause. I'm Kayla and I'm gonna be teaching you how to make little band bracelets with only um, two different colors of the First thing you're gonna need is little bands. I have three different kinds. I was just gonna ask you all about your, your bracelets. You have a lot, you're only gonna use two colors. Are there different kinds? Um, clearly you've been doing this for a while. How long have you been doing it? And tell me about the rubber bands. I've been doing it since I was eight and there is different kind of rubber bands, but they do the same thing. These rubber bands, these two containers are more stretchy so they don't hurt your fingers as much. These ones are more tight and they hurt your fingers if you are doing like a necklace. I'm going to start with the blue. Oh wait, after it's mine. Uh, so you're going to need blue bands, and you're going to need blue band hooks, which come with the blue bands usually. You can use S or C hooks. S hooks look like this. They're little S's. And then C hooks look like this. C hooks are just the I'm gonna start with blue, and you're gonna take whatever color rubber band you want to start with, and make it into an infinity shot sign like this. And then the next color you're gonna take, and you're gonna put it on top of that, and then pull this one over top of the other one. So then you're just gonna keep repeating. Hold it out so I can see how anything else. Yeah, it's static down there. Yeah, perfect. And then you're going to do the same thing, except this time you don't make uh, an infinity sign. You just keep going over top of the next colors. And then I'm going to speed this up because I want to show you how to um, finish these. I was just gonna ask you, how fast do you go when you're making these not for a demonstration? Are you going about full speed there? Uh, pretty much, yes. Usually I lay out the rubber bands like into two little piles so it goes a little bit quicker, but... How long will it take you to make a bracelet? A say? bracelet is about five minutes. How long for something bigger? Like well, can you make, you make a necklace? Yeah, you can make a necklace. Um, necklaces take about 10 minutes or 15. If you're doing uh, three, like three different colors, then it will take a lot longer. 
because it is a different kind of style. I'm just gonna end it here because it's just pretty. It's a small bracelet, but it works. And you're gonna take this end that your fingers are attached to, and you're gonna pull on one of the rubber bands, and then take this, the one that is attached, and make it into like pretty much one rubber band like that. And I'm gonna use an S hook. And you're gonna take the little opening on one of the ends of the S hook and hook it onto both of those rubber bands. And then the side that has just the one that you hold on, you're gonna hook it onto the other side of this. And then you have the bracelet. Question time! Um, so I'm going to teach you guys how to do a tarot reading today. Um, the ingredients you need in items you need tarot cards, um, a cleansed crystal, and a human to do the tarot reading on, which I brought my lovely friend Kayla. Um, so the first thing that you would do with um, a tarot reading is you would put, like, you would already take your cleanse crystal and you would take the cards out and you would set it on top, but if you were to cleanse it a different way, you would take incense and burn it around the cards. Um, The second step is, well, <laughs> um, so, um, I would shuffle them. So that's like a reference book, so you know what each card means? Yep. Um, so the seven of pentacles. So basically the seven of pentacles, um, it basically means that you are leaning on a lot of people right now and you're kind of struggling. Okay, here we that stuff for us. You should have it. So are these events happening to you? Are you struggling? <laughs> What would come next? Um, well, if she would want to get more into it, and she would want, like, I saw her pick just one card. Yeah, that is for just a plain where you're at right now and short, Maria. Are there different types of tarot cards? Yeah, there's like Christmas ones. You can get like different shows and stuff. I have my favorite singer, Melanie Martinez. Um, but there is many different ways to do tarot readings. You can do love ones, uh, future, but the future ones take a little bit longer. And the love ones, you have to explain like your struggles in the relationship. Who got you interested in doing tarot? Uh, my sister. She is a big 
Other questions? Okay, give her a round of applause. I need aluminum foil, I need water, as you can see, toilet paper, and paint, but I did not bring the paint. But you can make a basic shape out of the tin foil. But I chose this topic because I think it's really interesting and I like doing decoupage. Who taught you how to do My this? My brother taught me how to do it. Okay. Well, you can make an easy, basic shape, any shape you really want, out of the tin foil or aluminum foil. You can grab toilet paper, like two squares or maybe three if you want, as you can see here. And then you put it around your sculpture tightly, but not too tight so it lifts like this. And then you have to get your hand a little wet, not too wet, and just like do this. If it starts to lift, you can put another piece of toilet paper on it. And you wanna just keep on getting it wet till it's damp enough so it sticks. So like this. And then you grab more toilet paper and you can make like any little shape my brother made this one, he tried to make a penguin, so I would, for a penguin, I would make like a little oval like that. It's really small though, so you can barely see it, but like, you get your hand wet, and then you just get a, like, you get a little wet, damped, and then to glue it on to the base, you get your finger wet and you keep on dabbing it on till it's dripping, or close to dripping. Then you put it on any spot you want, but you have to get it like soaking wet where you want to put it. And then... So there's no glue involved? No, no glue at all. So, like that. And it's not, if it starts to fall off, you can glue it back on with water. But then you just keep on doing that. And then you let it dry for 10 to 15 minutes. Then when you're done doing that, you put all your details on at the same time, so you gotta make sure they actually stick. And then after it dries for 10 to 15 minutes, you can paint it, you let that dry, and then you get this. You can make any shape you want, any animal you want. Can you pass that around? I'm curious, is that heavy? Is it light? No, it's really light. You have to be careful because it's starting to fall apart. <clears throat> my brother made my mom a snake out of one, and I made myself a little dragon. But you can make how long would it take you to like how long did it take to like make this little penguin guy? Um, I would uh -huh. say around maybe 20 minutes or something with all the details, painting. When did you make it? My brother made it. I think he made it a few months ago. Okay, so let's say they last a long time. Yeah, mine lasted only like two days though because I didn't glue the wings on good enough. So, is this got foil on the inside of him as well? Yes. They all have foil on the inside like this. Other questions for Lily? Yes, Peyton. Um, I'm What's your favorite part of the My favorite part would probably be just like being creative, making fun little animals and monsters. Yes, what you have? How long did it take for you to do it? Um, my brother taught me, so I would say like maybe the first time was a little hard, but it was e easy after like the second time. Yes, Justin? I don't know that, but I would say like since they both have water, they're probably kind of like mixed together or something. Any other questions? Give her a final round of applause. I'm, I'm teaching you guys how to make PB and J sandwich. A sandwich. I choose it because of the pizza. And I love PB and J's. The ingredients you need is peanut butter, grape or strawberry jelly. I picked grape because strawberry's nasty. 
for red, any type of bread. I have holes in mine, so that works. And a butter. Do you have a bread preference? Like your favorite kind? No. Okay, it doesn't matter. I didn't read the thing. I just took it. All right. So step one, put the bread on the table. Start with peanut butter or you can do jelly bread. Jif or Peter Pan, or does it matter? It's not matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> there are some people that have very strong peanut butter preferences. It does not matter for the grape right. as well. Or the gel. We're a we're a Jif family, I hate to say. <laughs> we are a Jif family. Jiffy. How many people are Jif? Where's your Jif families in here, Jif? Do we have any Peter Pan? Peter Pan people? Alright, how about any Skippy people? That's a little Skippy. <laughs> So then, step two, start with peanut butter or jelly. Just pick, just scoop them out like that and grab one piece of bread and do it on one side and just smooth it out. If you need more, get more. Are you a person who likes lots of peanut butter or just a little peanut butter? You can do as much as you like, but I... How much do you like? I love peanut butter. So you do a lot? <laughs> I usually put peanut butter on both sides, then put the jelly on. So I'm a peanut butter lover, so like my dog. Uh, I put a lot on, but I'm not going to use that much because I'm going to make peanut butter after. Yes, do. <laughs> It's up to you if you want it crunchy or smooth. I pick smooth because crunchy is nasty. Same here. It's my opinion, but um, I'm gonna pick it. I do like your peanut butter. <laughs> bring up a backup jar. My uncle wouldn't let me bring peanut butter. So I have to take it. So after the peanut butter, you're gonna do peanut butter on both pieces. No, I'm gonna actually leave that one for jelly, because why not? Then after you put the peanut butter on one side, you have to do the jelly on one side, on the other side, on the other piece of it. Now let's see if I can open the jelly piece. So clearly you do not like strawberry jelly. Is grape your favorite? Yes. And you can use them. For me, I don't like using the knife, so I just like dumping it on. But I'm gonna use the knife for now. <laughs> you don't have to use that much, but if you're like your PB and J soggy, you can. <laughs> I like the jelly, um, um, like chunky on it on the bread because it tastes better. So you like lots of jelly as well. Not that much. Oh. Welcome. <laughs> so then, you can lick the knife if you want. Then put the peanut butter on the side where the jelly is. Just put it down and enjoy. Give me a round of applause. Do you ever eat mac and cheese with hot dogs in it? Ew. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Sorry, but it's the dad who likes simple dinners. Mac and cheese with little hot dogs cut up in it. It's good stuff, Trent. Keep going. Trent, do you make this as a snack? Do you make this as a meal I for dinner? I eat this every day when I go. Okay, so it's like your after school snack. Mm -hmm. And you put, I have, I got a water bottle, then you put like some water in it. Yeah, water. I was asking you, how much water? You fill it up to a line of the water. So the bowl has a line right in it? Yeah.
How long do you have to stir it before you put it in? Just a quick stir. Do you have a preference? Do you like the Easy Mac in the microwave? Do you like the stovetop mac and cheese? Do you like? Do you have a specific brand that you like to eat? No, I, I usually like the one on the stove. Okay. Do you like Kraft mac and cheese? Does it matter what brand? Aria. Um. So, like, do you have to stir it in between? Like, I usually stir it to make it. Only at the end, though? Yeah. Well, my grandma usually buys mac and cheese, so for me and my parents, so we all have to like it. like it's like a little treat. It's a good after-school snack. And I really love that. How many people like macaroni and cheese? I mean, is there anybody that does not like this stuff? Macaroni and cheese. Okay. Audience. Audience. How do you think the Kraft compares to the Velveeta cheese and sauce? Do you like that? Do you like, because you know, you got some that have the powder, then some that actually have that cheese sauce. Where do you stand on the Velveeta one? Is, are you yay or nay to Velveeta? Okay, it doesn't. All right, thank you. So we're definitely going to be dealing with something very hot when this comes out of the microwave. How old do you think somebody needs to be before they should be making this kind of mac and cheese by themselves? Probably 10 or 12. Okay. So you wouldn't recommend like little first and second graders try to no. make this on their own? What now? I can see the steam coming off of that. <laughs> Would you eat that all by yourself? Is that an individual serving?
and you kind of, can we see what the finished product looks like? Bring it right over, like tilt it a little bit. Or... I have an idea. Hey, right, give the man a round of applause. it before you make the sandwich. Yes. Okay. And then Are you going to show us how you cut the bread? You just push it on right here. I know you've got some pre-cut already, but we still don't we want to see how we cut the bread? Yeah. I, yeah. I think we all want to see how you cut the bread. The Not the cheese though. Don't cut the cheese. You didn't catch my cut the cheese joke. You didn't. <laughs> Connor heard it. No, 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 no. I said we want to see you cut the bread, but we don't want to see you cut the cheese. Let's go there, Ma. Oh, okay. So you put your bologna on your bread, and you put the cheese on the bologna. Oh, I use the Cheese just because nice. it's round. Sorry. Is it your favorite? For one of sandwiches, yes, but usually I just like Swiss cheese. So, some people use like ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise for theirs. I don't like them, so. So, you grab your other piece of bread, put it on top, and enjoy. Get one more round of Start by telling us, I'm gonna teach you today how to. I'm gonna teach you today how to break in a baseball glove. Why? And uh, I pick a side because I like baseball. And first, you wanna open a glove, grab a baseball. Are you a righty or a lefty? Mm -hmm. Are you a righty or a lefty? Righty. And we'll open it. Put the ball in the pocket of the glove and close the glove. Keep it closed. We'll grab the bat. <coughs> Don't break my table. <laughs> Don't break my table. that you have a volunteer with you today. What's your volunteer going to be doing? Uh, she's going to be following what I'm doing and my instructions to make the exact thing. Okay, so when you're done, we'll have two paper airplanes made, one by you and one by your assistant. Okay, thanks. So first, you're going to fold your paper in half with the So it looks like this. Okay, go slow and make sure you hold it out so we can see it as Olivia's doing it. Then you're going to unfold it and flatten it back out. So it's straight again. So you have this line, 
Then you're going to take this corner and fold it so the edge is lined up with the line. You fold that out. Yeah. And then you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Take that corner and fold it so it kind of overlaps the other one. Fold that one down. Now you're going to flip it over and fold it in half. Now, uh, slow down, your assistant is falling behind. Make sure that she's with you, your assistant. Now, you take a piece of paper and this corner, so it, like a little bit of it hangs off the side. Now you're gonna do the same thing, but just make it shorter, so it will come down again. Now you're going to do the same exact thing to the other side, and take the corner, fold down so it hangs up a little bit. Help her out, Carter. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, with your words. Are you crying? Are you crying? <laughs> I can't fold it forward. With your words. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, when, help her with your words. That's what I did. No, it got so broken. So record. doing it for Alright, we made it past that fold. Alright, so let her do it this time. So now you're gonna flip it on and then do it to the other side. Move it. Good. Now take it. You kind of do it again, so this end hangs off. Say that again. I have paper airplane. Could you demonstrate? No, stand. Go stand back. Stand back. Can I hit him? No, stand yes. back. All right, throw it towards the back of the room. Right. We want to see it go. We want to see it fly. Yeah. 